dear students, today we are going to see uh, another lecture titled Project Feasibility Analysis. Just for a reminder uh, students that we are in the phase 2 of this course that is a project planning. In the previous class I have discussed about coordination through integration management. So, in this lecture I am going to discuss about various feasibility analysis for a project. So, the agenda for this lecture is I will explain what is project feasibility analysis, then I will explain various components of a feasibility analysis report like market feasibility, technical feasibility, financial feasibility and environmental and social feasibility. Actually these feasibilities for example, financial feasibility, market feasibility, we have to cover in detail about various quantitative techniques. But I am going to avoid that quantitative techniques, I am going to give only the overview of various theoretical concept behind this various feasibility analysis. First we will see what is project feasibility analysis. Project feasibility analysis is a critical process that organizations undertake to assess the viability, sustainability and potential success of a proposed project before committing significant resources. So, it is a report that sees the overall viability of the project before committing the resources and it helps the stakeholders and make informed decisions by evaluating various aspect of the project. First we will discuss about uh, market feasibility that is one of the component of a project feasibility analysis. So, market feasibility analysis assess the demand for the product or service in a target market. Suppose you are your project is starting a new product or new service. The first requirement is, is there is really any demand for that product. So, unless there is no demand, there is no point in working on that project. So, that talk about this market feasibility analysis and the market feasibility analysis analyze the market trends, size and potential growth and it identify target customers and their needs. So, this is the introduction to the market feasibility. We will cover that various aspect of market feasibility in detail. So, what are the steps in market feasibility? Given the importance of market and demand analysis, it should be carried out systematically. So, market feasibility has to be done very systematically. The key steps in such analysis is the first step is situational analysis and specification of objectives. After that we will go for collection of secondary information, then we will conduct a market survey, then we will go for characterization of the market that is a profiling the market, then we will go for demand forecasting, finally we will go for market planning. So, these are the steps for market and demand analysis. Now, for making that market feasibility, we have to have the information. So, one of the source of information is secondary sources. Here the information may be obtained from the secondary and the primary sources. Secondary information is information that has been gathered in some other context and is already available. So, we can use secondary information which may be collected for some other context, we can use that information for doing the market and demand analysis. While secondary information is available economically, its reliability, accuracy and relevance for the purpose under consideration must be carefully examined. So, even though we use secondary informations, we have to see at what context that information was collected and in what way that secondary information is relevant to our project that has to be examined. So, secondary information though it is useful often does not provide a comprehensive basis for market and demand analysis. This may be a primary input for making your market and demand analysis. It needs to be supplemented with the primary information gathering through market survey specific to the project being appraised. So, the secondary information even though it is useful, but it has to be supported by the primary source of information like doing market survey doing the questionnaire survey, doing the interview with the experts. 
So, it is likely to be the sample survey. So, when we say the sample survey, so what are the different steps for doing the sample survey, for collecting the primary information? The first step is we have to define the target population for whom this project is intended. Then select the sampling schemes and sample size. There are different sampling size, sampling schemes is available like probability sampling, non-probability sampling and so on. And you have to see what should be the appropriate sample size. If you are planning to do some statistical analysis for forecasting the demand, every statistical analysis requires certain kind of certain number of sample size. You should be aware about that where, whether the sample size is adequate or not. Then we have to develop the questionnaire. The questionnaire should contain various aspects of the project in the perspective of the customers or stakeholders. Then scrutinize the information gathered, then analyze and interpret the information. So, here scrutinize information is whether the information which we collected is relevant or not. So, once we know it is relevant, then we should go for the next step, next step that is analyze and interpret the information. Sometimes we have to look for market for the product service. Suppose we are intended project is to develop a new product service, we have to see whether there is really market for that. So, based on the information gathered from secondary sources and through market survey, the market for the product or service may be described in terms of the following. The first is effective demand in the past and present. Then we can see the breakup of demand based on the customer profile. Then what will be the price for that product? Then method of distribution and sales promotion. Then consumers, information about the consumers. Then supply and competition and government policy. So, these are the informations gathered from secondary sources for doing the market survey. So, after gathering the information, about various aspect of the market and demand from primary and secondary sources. Next step is we have to estimate the future demand. So, for estimating the demand, a wide range of forecasting method is available to the market analyst. We are not going to study the quantitative aspect of this demand analysis, but we are going to see overview of various method for forecasting demand. So, there are three broad categories for forecasting the demand. One is a qualitative method, then there is a time series projection method, then the causal method. First, we will discuss about some qualitative methods for forecasting the demand. So, qualitative methods rely on experts judgment to translate qualitative information into quantitative estimates. So, most of the time the qualitative informations are obtained from the experts in that area. So, the important qualitative methods are jury of executive method and Delphi method. So, these are the qualitative method of collecting the information. The next forecasting method is a time series forecasting method. So, time series projection method generate forecast based on the analysis of historical time series. For example, last 10 years, what is the demand? So, what will be the demand for the 11th years? So, we use historical informations of the data with respect to time for forecasting the or to predict the demand. So, the important time series projection methods are we can use trend projection method. Here, we can use your regression analysis. Then, we can go for exponential smoothing method. Here, in the exponential smoothing method, so, the latest information is given the higher weightage, the old information is given lower weightage. So, the weightage for the past data is exponentially decreasing. So, that is why it is called exponential smoothing method. Then if there is a stable demand, we can if there is no trend, we can go for moving average method. Actually, these are very detailed quantitative methods, we can use lot of numerical problems but that I am not covering here, but you have to go through this various forecasting methods. The another method is the Bass diffusion model and the causal model. So, the Bass diffusion model seeks to estimate the pattern of sales growth for a new product in terms of two factors. One is P, we call it is a coefficient of innovation. 
then another term we will use in the Bosch forecasting model is coefficient of imitation. So, if there is no past data, if you are doing for example, any new technology, if you are want to forecast it, at that time this Bosch diffusion model is most suitable model. This also a qualitative method, we have to use nonlinear programming here, but we are not covering, but you should understand this is the one forecasting method for predicting the new product demand because you may not have the past data. The another popular method is the causal method. It seeks to develop forecast based on the cost effect relationship specified in explicit and quantitative manner. The most suitable techniques for the causal method is regression method. We can use a multiple regression method. So far we discussed about market feasibility. Now we will go to the next element in the feasibility analysis called technical feasibility. So, here we evaluate the technical requirement and challenges of the project and assess the availability of technology and expertise needed and we consider any potential obstacles in implementing the technology. So, these points are more important when we discuss about technical feasibility. What is the purpose of this technical analysis? So, the broad purpose of technical analysis is to ensure that the project is technically feasible in the sense that all the inputs required to set up the projects are available because technical feasibility is more important. For example, in certain places, certain locations when you are implementing the project, you may not get enough technology for that. So, sometime that technology may not work in that environment, sometime you may not get enough manpower to run the technology. So, Dealing with these kind of problems issues is called technical feasibility. The another purpose is to facilitate the most optimal formulation of the project in terms of technology, size, location and so on. It is a very important element to choose the right kind of technology, choice of technology for our project. A variety of consideration influences the choice of technology. What kind of technology should be used for in our project? First of all plant capacity. For example, if the plant capacity is small, we can go for lower level of technology. Suppose the plant capacity is very high, you should go for mass for example, production, mass production technology. Then what are the principal inputs? Then investment outlay and production cost because some technology may be very costly, but with the project may not give that much return on investment. So, we should be very careful when you choose in the technology, what will be the investment outlay and what is the return for that investment. Then whether the technology used by other units, whether the technology can be used by other units, then what kind of product mix, combination of products, mix of products that we are going to produce. And also when you go for choosing technology, you should look at the latest developments and ease of absorptions. So, you have to see in market trend what development is taking, taking place in the technology. So, you have to upgrade yourself with the latest development, otherwise you will become obsolete, you will become outdated. So, these are the factors that has to be considered while choosing the appropriate technology. So, appropriate technology refers to the production methods suitable to local, economic, social and cultural conditions. So, that technology should be suitable for a local, that technology should be accepted by the society and cultural conditions. The advocates of appropriate technology urge the technology should be evaluated in terms of the following questions. When you go for choosing the right technology, it has to be evaluated and following questions has to be asked before choosing that technology. The first question is, does the technology utilize local raw materials and manpower? For example, say the project is in hilly area, there that technology should absorb or utilize locally available inputs. We have to go for only that technology, you cannot every time transport the input from one place to another place. The second question should ask, do the goods and services produced cater to basic needs? Then whether the technology protect the ecological balance, some technology may provide a lot of waste that may affect the ecology whether the technology in harmonious with the social and cultural conditions, 
some technology should be accepted by society otherwise you cannot use the technology the next aspect when you go for technical feasibility is technical arrangements so satisfactory arrangement must be made to obtain the technical know how for the proposed manufacturing process suppose your project is implementing a new technology in the manufacturing context you should see that whether the technical know how is there or not you may borrow the technology but after that you have to use the technology so in your plant in your unit in your organization whether you have enough manpower to run the new technology that has to be identified when collaboration is sought among other things the following aspect of the agreement must be worked out in detail so when we go for collaboration as soon as we get the new technology generally it is advisable the person who supplied the technology he has to train our in house employees an important aspect of technical analysis defining the required materials and utilities and specifying their properties in detail and setting up their supply program so when you go for technology you should remember that material inputs and utilities so material inputs and utilities may be classified into four broad categories so raw materials processed industrial materials and components axillary materials and factory supplies and utilities so the point here is that if you go for a new technology so what kind of input is required for the technology to be successful whether that inputs are available locally so that point has to be keep in mind the another aspect is product mix so market requirements guide the choice of product mix suppose we have to have variety of products that need to be supplied to the market in the production of most items size and quality variations aim to satisfy the broad range of customers so there may be different sizes required sometime there may be different quality some customers expect very high quality so we have to have that you have enough technology to make different size and high quality products for example a garment manufacturer may have a wide range in size and quality to cater different customers then we have to re remember that you should consider the plant capacity before going for technology so here plant capacity or production capacity refer to the volume or number of units manufactured during a given period so several factors have a bearing on capacity decision one is technological requirement input constraint investment cost market conditions resource of the firm governmental policy so this will decide the plant capacity so for that plant capacity you should look for right type of technology then location and site the choice of location and site follows an assessment of demand size and input requirements so when we go for new technology you have to see what is the location what is the most suitable technology for that location that need to be studied and the site also in which locations so here location refers to reasonably broad area like a city in an industrial zone or coastal area here site refers to specific piece of land where the project would be set up there is a difference between location and site location is a broad area site is on the specific location next we discuss about another important project feasibility is called the financial feasibility so here what we do we estimate initial and ongoing cost of the project not only estimate the cost we estimate the revenue streams and potential profitability and we do cost and benefit analysis if it is suitable to you then only we will go for investing on the project so that is called financial feasibility here in the financial feasibility the first element is cost of project conceptually the cost of project represents the total of all items of outlay associated with a project supported by long term funds it is the sum of outlay on the following like land and site development building and civil works plant and machinery 
technical know-how and engineering fees. So, these contributes the cost of the project. So, we have to see cost of the project at the same time you have to see the benefit of the project. If there are more benefit then it is worthy for doing the project otherwise you need not do. In the cost of project the other elements are expenses on foreign technicians and training of Indian technicians abroad, then miscellaneous fixed assets, then preliminary and capital expenses, pre-operative expenses, margin money for your working capital, initial cash losses, these and all comes under cost of the project that have to be analyzed in the financial feasibility analysis. Another aspect is where will you get the money? So, means of finance for the project. So, to meet the cost of the project, the following means of finance are available. You can go for share capital, you can go for term loan or you can go for debenture capital, then we can go for deferred credit, then we can go for incentive sources. The experts from finance, he can explain each and every point in detail, but here we are covering only the overview. The another thing is the cost of production. Given the estimated production, the cost of production may be worked out that is more important. The significant components of cost of productions are material cost, utilities cost, labor cost and factory overhead cost. Typically the starting point for profitability projection is the forecast of sale revenue. In estimating sales revenue the following consideration should be borne in mind. First one is it is not advisable to assume a high capacity utilization level in the first year of the operation. So, the utilization of our plant should start to increase gradually. Initially, you should, you should not go for high capacity utilization because there is no, there are a lot of uncertain about on the costing issues whether the product will be sold or not and so on. Even if the technology is simple, the company may not face technical problem in achieving high rate of capacity utilization in the first year itself, there are likely to be other constraints like raw material shortage may come, limited power may be there, then may be a marketing problems. So, always what is advisable is at the first year you should not run your plant with the full capacity, you should increase the capacity gradually. The other element in the financial feasibility is working capital requirement and its financing. Here working capital is day to day cash requirement for running the project. In estimating the working capital requirement and planning for its financing, the following points has to be borne in mind. One is the working capital requirement consists of, of the following, one is raw material and components, stocks of goods in process, stocks of finished goods, debtors, operating expenses, consumables. So, these point has to be kept in mind while preparing for working capital requirement. The another important document is projected cash flow statement out of the project. So, here the cash flow statement shows the movement of cash into and out of the firm and its net impact on cash balance within the firm. The another feasibility of a project is environmental and social feasibility. Here what we do, we assess the environmental impact of the project. It is more important, now we are talking about sustainability, we talk about circular economy. So, whenever we make a project that should not affect the environment and we have to consider the social and community aspect because we say sustainability have the three component, people, planet and profit. So, yes profit is more important the planet, the environment also important and the people, those who live in the earth also are important. Then we have to evaluate the project's sustainability and corporate social responsibility. So, these components will be covered in the environmental and social feasibility. Now, we will study in detail about what is environmental feasibility and social feasibility. So, first we will see what are the things has to be considered in environmental feasibility consideration. First is impact assessment. So, what we have to do, we have to evaluate the project's potential environmental impact such as air and water pollution, deforestation, habitat disruption and other ecological consequences. 
So, this point nowadays is very much important. Then whether the project is complying, compliance with the regulations, meeting the regulations. So, we have to make sure that the project complies with the local, national and international environmental regulations and standards. The next consideration is sustainability. Assess the project's sustainability by examining the resource use, waste generation and the overall ecological footprint. Now, we will discuss about social feasibility. What is the social feasibility? Social feasibility involves analyzing the potential impact of a project on the community, society and stakeholders. What are the considerations we have to do while we doing the social feasibility analysis? First, you have to do the stakeholder analysis. So, we have to identify and assess the concerns and interest of various stakeholders including local communities, employees, customers and other relevant parties. If it is negatively impact these stakeholders, then it is not advisable to go for that project. Then second consideration is community impact. Examine how the project may affect the social fabric of the community including changes in demographics, employment and overall well-being. Then cultural considerations, impact of this project on cultural considerations. You have to take into account the cultural aspect of the community and ensure that the project respect and integrates with the local customs and values. The next one is a social responsibility. It is a very important when we go for a implementing a project. So, we have to evaluate the project's commitment to social responsibility including issues like labor practices, human rights and community development labor. So, dear students, in this lecture I have discussed about various feasibility analysis. Just I want to remind you I have covered only the theoretical aspect of various feasibility analysis like market feasibility, technical feasibility, financial feasibility and environmental and social feasibility. But there are lot of quantitative aspect is involved here, but I am not covering here then it will become purely quantitative kind of subjects. But since, you, since I am teaching at strategic level, you should aware about different types of forecasting techniques, the different analysis, financial analysis. Thank you.